What you guys got another video here for you on how to upgrade an old computer to a new PC case. We've got a PC here that needs a bit of TLC. We're going to be basically uh, transferring a lot of this stuff into a new case and replacing some of the components. We'll probably end up replacing uh, the graphics card here with a smaller type graphics card because it doesn't fit the sort of budget that we're looking at. We're going to be replacing the RAM, the case, the fans, the NVMe drive and the power supply is all going to be brand new. So we're going to replace all this stuff and transfer it across. So we're going to reuse uh, the board here and the CPU. So what we're going to do is remove the bracketing system here because the cooler that we're going to be using, which is the Cooler Master Hyper 12 RGB version, we're going to be using this uh, cooler on this system here. And it doesn't use this bracket system, so we need to remove it. So let's go ahead and remove both of these brackets and then we can lift the board up and then remove the back plate because the cooler has its own back plate. So let's go ahead and remove this back plate here. So what we need to do next is get our back plate. I've already got the uh, screws here on the back plate and they go into one position on here. It tells you all this in the diagram and then all we need to do is put this onto the back of the motherboard here. It's much more easier putting this on in this way. You can put it on inside the case if you want to, but it makes it a little bit more difficult. So now we've got the uh, screws poking through. We can put on our little nuts here. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these down. And uh, once we get these four all screwed down, we'll be able to mount our cooler on here. So let's go ahead and tighten these up. Now it does come with a little spanner inside the kit, so you can tighten these down uh, with the spanner here. I'm going to do them finger tight first then go round afterwards with a spanner and tighten these up just a little bit. Don't over tighten these. Now if you have got a, a cheap stock cooler that come with your CPU whether it be Intel or AMD and you want to upgrade it to something a little bit more substantial then look for the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB version. Very affordable cooler and if you don't like the RGB you can get the non-RGB version as well. And it's a really good affordable uh, CPU cooler. So I've now got all of these finger tight here. I'll just get the little spanner and tighten these up. And then we can uh, move on to the next step. So what we need to do now is put the little mounting bracket onto the cooler itself. I've removed the fan and I'm going to go ahead and mount these onto uh, this cooler here. It's held on by just one screw and basically it screws onto the bottom here. Let's go ahead and get this bracket. It'll only go on one way here. If you look at the diagram, it will tell you how to put this on. You can see there's a little ridge on this side here, and this will go up on the uh, top of the cooler here. And you push this in and then screw it down. And once you've got this in, we can then put some compound on, and then we can screw this onto the actual mounting uh, system that we've already installed on the motherboard here. So let's go ahead and tighten this up. Now these will only tighten so far and then they will just stop so you can't over tighten them. So just go to the screw stops turning and then we've now got the bracket affixed to the actual cooler itself. So let's go ahead and just nip this last one up here. There we go. And what we can do now is put some compound on our CPU. Now how you apply your thermal compound is entirely up to you. This is Arctic MX5. It's one of the best ones on the market and it's very affordable. And I'm just going to put a small amount on here. Now, Arctic recommend that you spread this around on CPU rather than leaving it in one little blob. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put our latex glove on and we can then just uh, smear this around the CPU. As long as we've got a good covering here, that's all that really matters. I'm just going to smear this across the actual CPU and I prefer to do it this method on AMD processors and uh, basically get a nice good coating across here. Any surplus will stick to the glove and then we can then remove the glove and throw it away and then we can get our actual cooler and line it up onto the mounting uh, screws here. So let's go ahead and do this and we can screw it straight down. There's four screws and you want to do this uh, in a diagonal fashion and work your way around. Let's go ahead and get our screwdriver and tighten this down. You notice the actual fan has been removed from the cooler that's so we can get access to the actual screws here which makes it mounting a lot more easier and then we'll just go ahead and tighten this down as well you don't want to tighten down one side you want to make sure that you do uh, diagonally 
And once that's done, we can then reapply at the fan. And this will only go on the front on the RAM side here. So let's go ahead and clip this into position. Very simple and easy uh, installation method for these Cooler Master Hyper 212s. And there we go, that's now done. And this is the black version here, which I do like, and it will suit this motherboard uh, design very well. So once we've got this done, we can go ahead and uh, remove the screw for the NVMe drive here. And we're just going to quickly uh, put this drive in. I should have put this in, but I forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. We've got a Samsung uh, Evo Plus. So I'm going to just whack this in here. This is a one terabyte drive. It's a brand new drive. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in as well. And this will give us those Gen 3 speeds. Now we need to just uh, put on our heatsink back on top of the board here. I have removed the plastic covering on the bottom and there is a thermal pad on the bottom of this. So let's go ahead and screw this down. Should have put this on really before I put the cooler on, but that's just my mistake there. But it's no big deal. We can get this still installed pretty easy. Let's go ahead and get the RAM installed. This is a Dominator Platinum Enthusiast RAM here. It's 3200 megahertz. And uh, again, this is 32 gigabytes of RAM on two sticks. And we've got four slots here. So we can basically uh, populate another two of these later on if he wants more, more memory. But he does a lot of virtual machines and stuff like that. So I think this will be perfectly fine. And again, I like the design of the Chrome effect on top of the RAM, which will set off lovely with this board because it's still still legend series uh, as rock motherboard which i think it really will set it off just nicely so let's go ahead and get these inserted there we go that's all nicely done and we can now take care of the cables on that cooler as well and the rgb so let's go ahead and turn this around here and we can just uh, plug in the actual cables here we've got two of them on here that we need to take care of which is no big problem because they're all up this side of the board. So we'll go ahead and get these plugged in. We'll probably remove this little cable tie as well at some point and then tuck all the cables underneath the actual uh, cooler here. Now you can poke these out the back, these cables, if you wish. But I prefer to tuck them underneath the uh, cooler in this situation here. Let's just get this one. These are always fiddly, these little four pins. That's down done. And the surplus cables can be cable tied and tucked underneath the actual cooler here. You're not going to see it because it will be up the top of the case and you won't be able to see that. Now, if you want to poke these out the back, you can do. I find this is perfectly fine and it doesn't uh, restrict airflow. So it'll be perfectly fine tucked down here. With that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is basically getting this into uh, the case. So we've got a new case here, which we went for the Corsair case. And I do like this case. It's gonna have some nice effect on the front here. So good airflow, we've got three fans in the front. We're gonna have two at the top and one at the rear. With plenty of fans here. So now we need to put in the IO shield. So let's go ahead and pop this into position here. Should just clip into position. Got the tripod right in front of the case here, which makes it very difficult to do. Now I've already checked these standoffs and they're in the correct position so I'm going to grab the cooler and then drop the motherboard into position here and we can just line this up now a good quick tip here is before you screw down you might want to put the cable in especially if you've got extension cables here I've already got the CPU cable uh, plugged in and this makes it a lot more easier to plug this in before you screw the motherboard down I think there's about nine screws sometimes there's already one standoff in the middle of the motherboard on some cases and you need to screw this down uh, to the case use the correct screws and then we can move on to the next step of the build and you can see the build is already starting to come together and that ram does look really nice in that motherboard because it's a steel legend series motherboard it has that metal look and that ram really does set off lovely so i've already got all the uh, little wires plugged into the motherboard here poked them through the bottom and I've got all those set just going to do this little USB one here plug this into the board as well and then we can do the 24 pin as well and get this all set up as well and that means we're getting to the end of this we need to still do some fans and some cable management and things like that so let's go ahead and uh, button this up and get this finished off so what I'm going to do now to get the power supply in here 
I need to remove or move the cage here. The good thing is with this case is you can actually unscrew uh, the hard drive cage and move it along so we can get the power supply in. Because once you start putting the cables into some power supplies, it does get a little bit tight. And this is quite a big power supply. Um, it's a 750 watt power supply. Now you may be thinking that's overkill for this particular uh, card because we're only going to be putting a 1660 Super in here but it just means that that person can upgrade to a better graphics card later on down the line if they want to and I'm liking this uh, movable hard drive cage here now there's a lot of budget cases online that which you can buy that cost around about 30 pounds but these can be really troublesome they have molded riveted uh, hard drive cages and stuff like that which makes the build very difficult and you can see this is a, I think it's an RM 750 watt Corsair power supply. They're certainly not as long as they used to be these RM 750 watt power supplies, but it's still quite a big uh, power supply for this particular case. But once I get everything into position, everything should be perfectly fine and we can screw it down and everything should be all right. So let's go ahead and uh, get these screws in and there's four screws on the back of the power supply and then we can start doing some uh, cabling here to get the cables into the case. We've got extension cables on here which will make it a bit more difficult but it is doable and I do think it will uh, look really nice with those extension cables in here. So I've got these in here now and again we need to plug this in. I need to I'll put some cable combs on here. I'm going to put some RGB fans on the back these are the Techware Orbis fans so we've got three of these to put in I didn't have the Corsair fans to match the front ones um, to hand so I'll just use what I had and these are the Orbis fans so these will come with their own uh, fan hub as well which is going to make it a little bit more difficult but it should be doable and once we get all these fans in we can then turn our attention to the GPU so I'm going to go ahead and uh, screw these fans down and then we can quickly move on to the GPU. So here we are, we're going to be putting the GPU, we're just doing the final bits here and uh, we'll get this one in here. So this is the GPU we're going to go for here and it does match the build. You can see here it's got that metal look to it, it's got the metal plat back plate and also that nice silver um, coating on the GPU. So it's always important that you choose the right parts for the right type of build that you're doing. And that way it'll all look really nice once you put it all together so what we need to do now is screw the actual uh, graphics card in and then we can put in our cable and I'll also put some uh, cable combs on these cables here because they are loose here so let's go ahead and get this in and plug this in here now what makes a difference to any sort of PC build is picking the right components that go together and also uh, getting extension sleeves like these as well which will really bring it to life and uh, once we get some black cable combs on here it should look pretty nice and all we need to do here is lift the card up and screw the card in with the two screws and you can see it's just starting to come together and everything looks in the right position here because we've got all the right color coding parts in here and that's what your aim is when you're buying parts just don't buy the cheapest parts possible you're looking for parts that go well together we've got a bit of white or silver on the board going with the cable extensions and also the all the components are either black or gray and it should look pretty nice so they've got some cable combs on here can probably put another one on that 24 pin up there and that needs to be tucked in a little bit more i never understand why people really push all of these in so it leaves hardly any cable showing you pay all that money for psu uh, cable extensions and you're pushing them all the way out the back of the case so you can't see them so i like to leave a little bit in there so you can actually see them now the cable management turned out pretty well considering there's a lot of cables in this midi tower case here there is quite a few cables and this is the difficult part is keeping it nice and tidy and I've already left the SATA power cables down near the power supply there loose ready for that person who wants to put in two hard drives there. There's also SATA cables already plugged in so they don't have to disturb any cables or anything like that. It makes it easier for the person to put drives in there 
and uh, there's power there ready to go. So I've left those already loose there for them and they can just tuck them in after they finished. Let's have a look at the end result and see what it turned out like. 